narratives with Anutosh. In this episode, we are going to talk to Ritu Parna Niyog. She is a queer rights activist and library educator based in Assam. The founder and director of Akham Foundation, she works on education, gender justice and advocates for a free public library system in India through the Free Libraries Network. She firmly believes that education is the key to reducing the bullying that she had faced in her lifetime. They were young children who did not know what queer means and they made fun of it. While cities in India have become much more sensitive, Ritu Parna has engaged her life in spreading education through her foundation, taking the library to different places, starting from our hometown. Welcome, Ritu Bhana. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is really wonderful that uh, you are my guest today in the Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. And I was just going through your wonderful uh, work that you have done and after completing a degree in social work from Tata Institute of Social Sciences in 2017, you decided to go back to your village and there you thought about a program spreading education to the children through a program, Kita Pe Kofka Koi. Uh, you know, uh, translation would be 
the books speak. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Could you just talk about it? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is the first Ritu Parna. Uh, Ritu Parna. Parna. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand. Again, Ahomya and then yeah. you know, this part. So uh, thank you, thank you for having me here uh, and I'm really happy to be here and also I feel empowered uh, looking at how you were managing everything. <laughs> I just want to tell all the audience that uh, this gentleman <laughs> who is taking my interview, I really you know felt inspired because I saw when I came like you know making coffee and serving and you know greeting, then I saw doing camera, light, everything. Just it's inspiring. So thank you for thank being you. there. Thank you. Uh, and I really wish uh, you know, all the best for your uh, this small initiative which you are doing out of passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what my work is also all about. Uh, it's about right. passion. Right. Uh, so I started uh, in 2020 as an online storytelling platform uh, because I wanted to start a library in my village uh, since I was a child. Uh, so you said 2020. 2020. Is it during the COVID? During the COVID, but it was an online storytelling platform. Okay. Because I wanted to start a physical library, mm -hmm. and I put order and everything, but my all the books were stuck in warehouse okay. because of lockdown. Then and I like to work in plan A, plan B, you know, in that way. So if something is not happening, then I'll just do something. So. Uh, so that's how this online storytelling platform started uh, and I put the name Kita Pe Kothakoi because that's always sounded poetic to me and I always felt connected with that word because when I was bullied as you said nobody was there to talk to me uh, but it was book uh, which was speaking to me so okay. that's how this Kita Pe Kothakoi the whole that, phrase that, came That concept Kita Pe Kothakoi or the book speak it's very poetic. Yeah. It's very poetic. And uh, books uh, written by somebody yes. is his words that has been written. Mm. And when you read it, mm. it is as if that person is talking, talking to, to me. Yeah. So that's a wonderful concept. Yeah. And it's a free library yes. that you have started through your foundation, mm. Akham, Akham Foundation. Foundation. And uh, you thought that the best place to start this is from your hometown. Yes. Why do you think like that? Ha. Ah, so, कहते हैं ना कि घर जब नहीं बदलते हैं दिन हम समाज नहीं बदल सकते. कुछ भी बदलाव जो है घर से शुरू होता है. जी कुनो ऐसा सेंजेस सिटो है या. So no. Ah, uh, so I always believe that you know any changes ah uh, which we want to see in society it needs to start from home. We, we need to change the home first. So this is why I wanted to start a library uh, from my village. And also uh, me being a Ahomya person or uh, you know a person coming from village, I feel connected with my roots uh, and this is so much you know, inbuilt within myself that I, I so feel connected with my village. So this is why my village. Where, where is your? It's village? in Jorhat, Upper Assam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and tell us about your village. Yeah, it's 11 kilometers away from the district headquarters. Okay. Uh, till class 10, um, I was in class 10. There is no electricity. Uh, there is no pakka road till now. Uh, so it's, Which is that village? Uh, it's called Ahanguri Gaon. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. it's an Indian area. It's in 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 the middle of a tea garden. Uh, uh -huh. So tea tea estate. Uh, so it's a beautiful village. Uh, people are nice, people are beautiful, uh, and my family, uh, my parents, they still live there. Uh, so, but yeah, so that's why I, because the village gave me so much, uh, the person today I am, uh, a lot of contribution the village has towards me. So, something I wanted to give back also, and something to be rooted there, and then doing it. As I said again, that change this starts from home. We, right. we cannot change the whole world thing, thing that can change the world, but there is nothing is happening at home. So that's the reason. So what started during the COVID time, because we all went online, now we are offline. Yeah. So how do you continue that Kitab e Katha Kai? That same book speaks yeah. so, offline. Yeah, so uh, I, I ran the storytelling platform for quite some time and then I started doing pop-up library in public parks okay. and open spaces, uh, housing societies and workshop spaces, university colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 2022 August, 
I uh, started the physical library in my own village. Mm. Uh, it was around 650 books of my collection okay. uh, since my childhood uh, till the time. And when I started doing job, uh, I used to buy books every month, okay. little by little, keeping books at my home, Guwahati home, like where I used mm-hmm. to live. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, nurturing my dream to start the library. So you had a physical library or it, had, it was a mobile library? First, I started as a mobile library where I was. You the, were moving from yeah. place to place. Okay. <laughs> in a jaw, in a bag. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, you started with about 30 children. No, in, in, in my village, it's around average. 100, 100 children. Uh, but on average, an average, you on an average 30, 30 children used to come so regularly. How do you do distribute books? You should, you should have 30 books or the books were shared? So, I started with six. 50 plus books. Okay. And now the those are all your books. Yeah. Okay. Then, because of well uh-huh. because of people who believe in reading, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as a cause mm-hmm. or right to read, mm-hmm. uh, people started contributing. Okay. So now the library has around 2,000 books. So now you have a place where those books are. Yeah, the library. And, the, and library. the children come. Yeah, children come regularly. Children uh, regularly. Average regularly. number is 20. They borrow the book. This, we do the circulation, okay. we do read aloud, we do story. And it is totally free. It's totally free. Yeah. Entirely your uh, contribution. And, and then the other people, the people who, who have donated. Yeah. yeah. That, that's an NGO uh, that you are running. I run. And mm-hmm. why free? I just want to add because education is our right. Right. Yeah. So when it is right, it has to come in free. Right. And especially for children. Mm-hmm. And we, we have to have access to books. So that we can read because when we read we can think and we can when we can think then we can take action so okay. the reading is the core and to make reading available to everyone we have to make books available to everyone and that can be done only by a free library and i do not strongly believe i like strongly believe not to put a single penny also as a fees okay. because it's a hug <clears throat> it's a right Mm-hmm. So it should be just free and universal, just like right to education. It's it's right to read. And how come you got that name, hmm. Story Mama? <laughs> this is just my Instagram user ID, the Story Mama. Uh, so when I was telling story, everyone's like, "Oh, Ritubarna meet the storyteller, the storyteller, the storyteller." Then I was just thinking, what I should just put to public to call me. Then mama is a very gender neutral way I looked at. So mama in African countries when they call the ma, mama mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in that way. So uh, the spelling M-A-M-A I took because again patern- maternal uncle is also called mama here in India. And uh, now we are talking so, about a story <laughs> mama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, on that lighter note. Yeah. Uh, mm, so the books that you have in your library, mm. they are all in the, you know, the local Assamese language or you have multi-language? Three languages basically. Okay. Assamese, English and Hindi. Oh wow. Uh, and we have primarily books for children, story books, okay. picture books, uh, chapter books, novels, short story, encyclopedia, dictionary uh, and other stationary items. So so this this library remains open on every day? Every 24 day. 24x7 or it no. is only for a certain time? Uh, every day mm-hmm. uh, in the afternoon time. Mm-hmm. Depending on the season, it uh, it is in your hometown still. In, in my in home village. Village. Yeah. yeah. So you have any uh, plans for moving your library to the other places like in Guwahati? I al- I already have another library in Dibrugarh. It's okay. called Center of Ahoykani Feminist Library and Resource Center. Okay. Again, it also has around two thousand books. Okay. And then I don't talk about my plan but then since you asked and you already said the name Gahanti, yes i have a plan to set up yes. one library because one this, is, this is a, such a noble uh, work that you are doing bringing books because nowadays uh, because of the online uh, you know readability you have all this kindle and other things uh, purchasing the real physical book is very much uh, becoming very reduced these days People don't buy books online and they prefer to buy it online through a lot of uh, online portals. But you are still uh, pro- promoting the physical book uh, because that touch and feel of that book. And uh, the children that come to you, uh, 
the day you started and a long time has passed hmm. how do you feel what where are they now when you st- have started and now what has happened uh children are more happy okay <laughs> that i can say that's one of the major you now i can see they feel excited mm-hmm. uh and uh, uh they get excited around books and they like to do more things and all uh they can read more fluently they can talk a lot if you will come to my village then all the children who comes to library they will ask you so many questions mm-hmm. uh so many questions and that happen one of the reason because they could read books uh and because they could read books they have more things to you know think and then to navigate and then to articulate and then to tell it to the whole world also so i can see and then they want to read more because they keep on asking me more books new books so, uh, new so things in the library they yes. they keep so on asking so it's a continuous process you have to keep on adding new books yeah and uh, do uh, uh, you know the the content of your books that uh, you used to have in your library uh, how do they uh, be interesting for the children okay so we call it curation book curation of course and book curation is a very thoughtful process when we would do uh, in book curation uh, we think about two three things one is the language for sure uh, and the reading level what our children are at mm-hmm. and also the kind of topics or subjects they will be interested and they need it and very contextual to the local culture and the aspiration they can be on so you are correct, connecting the children of today to their heritage yes to the and past also the future and the future yeah yeah right. yeah and, and it's a range of topics from nature okay. to friendship to human so, stories uh, and all all these students from your village they do to, they do go, definitely go to some school yeah and uh, no on the way back home they come to your library mm. or they have a particular time when they come to your home and no, as i said uh, it's afternoon time after okay. the school okay. so and during that time they can come at any point mm-hmm. in time so now you have how many students in your library it's around 100 children who are member okay. but on an average to 30 children come they come on every a daily day basis. on a daily yeah. basis yeah. and they also borrow the books yeah as i said if we do book circulation they can keep books for one week and they come they back can, and they return, return it back yeah, to you and then they can take new books uh, and this is uh, really a very noble uh, mission that you have taken because uh, we had i remember in my childhood days uh, in our locality uh, people had books and which we used to borrow and uh, that was a different concept but mm. this concept is really uh, very deep rooted mm-hmm. and it focuses on the education of the child and uh, apart from that mm-hmm. apart from this book uh, what else uh, do you do for the children ha uh, so my primary work is to make books available for them okay. i do storytelling read aloud i storytelling yeah, yeah. i i closely do that with children and that is very much part of my practice so that uh, also includes some kind of dramatic uh, yeah, drama, yeah like drama the way you do stage. storytelling yeah right. yeah, right. yeah right. like different you know uh-huh. uh, creative methods uh, mm-hmm. like i try to adopt mm-hmm. and children love it i love it <laughs> that is more important like uh, are we enjoying or not like okay. when i am doing i am, in, am a- i enjoying apart, uh, apart from whatever is written in the books mm. anything that is that can connect them to their real life Uh, you know uh, situations going on do you focus on that yeah, also we do a lot of conversation in the library that's mm-hmm. the whole purpose of librarian reading because mm-hmm. when you are read when we read the social issues anything yeah. environmental yeah. issues so if you read those. and then after that you do not have any conversation then right. i don't call it as an act of reading okay. so this what thing is called act of reading mm-hmm. so act of reading has different elements mm-hmm. so uh, act of reading has been in india is a castist way uh, when there is a keeper of knowledge uh, who will keep knowledge and who will not get knowledge so you do individualistic reading mm-hmm. when we say keep silence be mum and be quiet and read it means you just want to keep the knowledge with yourself mm-hmm. but in a free library what we do 
we read the book, we have conversation, we talk about it, and we talk about disseminating the knowledge and information with everyone equally. So that there is no casteist way or classist way to be someone who is keeper of knowledge. But it's everyone who can have hold on knowledge because knowledge is the power, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the real empowerment if it, it can happen to anyone. So this is why within library conversation is so so important and equal conversation and when you started the first time that you were you were with this plan in mind and uh, you wanted that free community library that you're going to put up what was the reaction of the parents oh everyone was like was happy and the the vision they would say that we are happy because they said hey, we can't buy books a free library can give more books to our children what they deserve uh, and we cannot afford books to buy. So they were really happy. My villagers came forward. They, uh, you know, contributed in like Shramdan. Uh, and then maybe someone was bringing one or two books. Uh, someone was just making tea on the day of inauguration, bringing some sweets. So villagers were so happy and so involved in the whole process of building the library together. Moreover, the children were more happy. Uh, yeah, like unboxing the books and then looking at it, covering it, cleaning it, so yeah. Now I'd like to uh, know from you, apart from the library, the wonderful library Gitab e Kothakoy, what else social work are you engaged in? Um, I am into gender justice work uh, in Assam and Northeast. Um, I closely work with LGBTQIA community in Assam. So basically I have been trying to mobilize the community and organize the community from rural Assam and small towns of Assam. And uh, I go to colleges, universities uh, to talk about uh, LGBTQIA issues. Uh, then also to spread awareness on gender sexuality. Uh, like in past two three years, I have reached to more than twelve thousand young people in Assam and some other parts of Northeast India, uh, talking about uh, gender justice, LGBTQI rights, gender equality, uh, gender-based violence, uh, and uh, uh, that is one. And then also, I have been working closely with my young community members uh, to build them or to develop them as a leader, so that they can take or bring more action in the ground for social justice. Uh, that is one. So, uh, and also we organize the community in small towns to do pride work so that we have more visibilities. Right now I am focusing on sustainable livelihood for transgender community in Assam because livelihood is such one critical area or uh, you know issue which my community, transgender community, has been facing or uh, you know it concerns so there is no narrative about it there is no data there is no policy there is no schemes so then I'm trying to see now with my community to learn from my community what we can do together so that my community have a way for sustainable livelihood uh, because when you are economically independent and you have a dignified way of livelihood then you can achieve or you can go more towards a dignified life. Uh, right now we are you know, doing a research work, like research project. Uh, I am doing data collection, uh, listening to people, uh, collecting stories from people and what they want to do, what they aspire to do. From there, uh, we will go for more intervention and also mental health because mental health is one such big concern or area for all of us now in this time, of course, post-COVID or whatever. But for my community, it has been one of the biggest you know, concern. So I am trying to work on that also, that how in government systems, medical colleges, uh, you know, government hospitals, how we can make mental health affordable uh, or accessible especially for my community so that we have more queer affirmative practitioners so these are some of the work and also i'm working on the access of rights and entitlement for the transgender community in assam so that our community get more inclusion in government systems uh, if any government programs and schemes are happening or coming then my community should uh, you know get uh, the benefit also and how to do it because not 
informations are available in ground my people doesn't really know that they can get a transit id card and what's the process and all so i try to work with my people around it so that everyone can have that access to the equal rights uh, so yeah these are some of the other work which i work through my foundation akam foundation along with my uh, library work and that's it when i uh, everything is around me and my work uh, and my community so yeah and uh, what is the response that you get from the society when you go and address uh, such issues in public places? it has been always wonderful and beautiful uh, i never found any resistance from anyone it's complete love acceptance respect that's what i received and i really look forward for that also mm-hmm. what you give and that and, you and, get back and uh, i'm sure even the government is also now aware about it yeah and they like have the started the things, are moving, things are moving things are moving uh, there is this transit and person protection act yes. 2019 yeah. uh, there are more functionaries are you know getting formed uh, mm-hmm. formulated mm-hmm. uh more thing needs to be done for sure but then i will not deny the fact that nothing is happening uh, at least some stepping stones are happening okay. because yes. of years of work yes. also willingness of and, the and, and uh, i'm sure you think that we have to start from the school level mm. addressing this kind of issues because we have uh, in some places in schools where we have a student and uh, the student undergoes lot of uh, you know issues that happens with them uh, i have seen it and you know and so you have been uh, visiting different schools and then the college and uh, to make the children aware of uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, uh, changes in the which can happen to them also So what are your experiences uh, you know experiences when you go to different uh, schools with children again it has been always wonderful i have been working with only children uh-huh. so even teachers like recently i completed one training for government school teachers so wonderful uh, it's a 3 days workshop from my side uh, so much of connection i could feel with the teachers some of them are still touch with me they you know message me they call me uh, and i always see the positive side of no life or anything around us uh if we look at positivity then you get back positivity uh and with children it's beautiful always uh they no sense so and they don't do they don't differentiate it's just us the adult who try to put that okay. you know negative things right. within children's right. brain and right. mind then we try to dictate them then maybe they will behave like that I don't think children are pure. Uh, so even are. even you know issue you know issues of bullying mm. uh, is one of it's the not, most. It's uh, not. It's not. It's not fault of children. Mm. It's fault of parenting. It's fault of uh, lack of safe school environment. Mm. It's the fault of upbringing. Uh, how you are creating that environment of socialization for your child. How you are uh, you know nurturing your child and the upbringing and the environment at home a child learn bully or violence from the parents when they see their parents fighting uh the father beating his or her mother the boy especially the boy they learn the violence first that oh you can do like this because you know you are man uh anything to do with it it's it's all about upbringing and how you are behaving like a parents it's to do with parenting so if any parents if whoever is listening and you complain about your children at your old age it's you could not raise a good human it's your fault so you should reflect on your part on that note it was really such wonderful conversation with ritu parnanyo and i am sure the viewers have come to know certain very subtle things that we often forget we often overlook we often uh, you know don't take note of it and it keeps on growing and it happens so it was really wonderful talking to ritu parnanyo our guest for pixel narratives with anutosh in our next episode we'll be talking to yet another achiever who will be sharing with us his or her wonderful lifetime till then goodbye